Welcome to the Man TF Up podcast here in the Man Cave. I'm Kimmy B. Lenny. And we have a good friend of mine. Go ahead, introduce yourself. Jose Flaco Perez. What up? Jose uh, Flaco Perez. For the intents and purposes of this podcast, we will be referencing him as Flaco. I would just like to put that out there. He does own an incredible boxing gym in Hollywood, Florida called the FCG. Um, I got that right, right? Yep, Flacco's Community Gym. Flacco's Community Gym. Uh, he does a lot of incredible things. Before we go any further, though, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and follow the podcast, all of our social media channels. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. We're everywhere. I, I go through the rundown every yeah. week. No, we're everywhere. Yeah, Just we're follow us. literally everywhere. At Man TF Up TV. And once you're there, you can find us anywhere. anywhere. Exactly. Can I like, go live? And if you want to email us... <laughs> You know the email address. Yeah. Kimmy B. At mantiafup.com. Yeah. Is it just Mantiaf Up? I thought it was Man- Mantiaf Up. Mantiaf Up TV. Get it? See, I'm just all Straight. fucked up. Great. Oh, my it's, goodness. You know. um, so we've had a little bit of everybody, but at the end of the day, it always boils down to those moments in our lives when we've had to Mantiaf Up or Man the Fuck Up, um, you know, and just get it done. And I think that you have a really incredible story, especially because I know the man that you have evolved into. <laughs> Although you're still wearing them same damn Tims. They're new, they're new. Look, guys, I got new Tims on, I swear. No, I, ha- I have a funny story when you're done about training with him on Christmas Eve in an elf outfit. And you're those just weird with tims. it. Like, it was supposed no, to be like. It was like the creepiest cool thing ever. And playful. You just. It was so creepy. What goes on in that head <laughs> you of were yours? Creepy. Like. You were wearing an elf outfit? Yes. I was. No, he was oh. wearing an elf oh, outfit. Would, I would have I like, loved to see her But like her itty bitty elf shorts. It was, and we're in the gym the and it's it Tim's on. And I was just like, my man, what is happening here? Dog, this is it just, was supposed to be like. Christmas. No, it was very It was, very Christmas. It was, the, it was very, the same was, outfit I wear every Christmas morning with my kids. An elf hat, a white beater, and these little elf shorts. This They're was, like elf boxers. This was They're straight like, out of a really low budget porn. No, like that that's, was that, that shows was what, the vibes that, that I was shows getting. What goes it was on disturbing. in your head. It was disturbing. Never and you once know did I think about doing a porn with those that shorts was, on. That was just inappropriate. Come on, focus now. Take us back. You grew but up don't lie. Life. You did think about doing a porn with Kimmy. Stop! <laughs> we had a whole episode about this last week, and we're not doing it again. No. Focus. I, don't, I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to be in the porno, but I would definitely produce it. <laughs> Film it. Yeah, film it. <laughs> and, and sell it out. Because it would be a Golden Globe winning, like, it would be awesome. Guys, so I, I'm going to direct the rest of this conversation just for the record here, all right? Like, this is clearly an A, B in conversation. I'm going to just, I'm like, supposed to see my way out of it. It's not going to happen. Take us back to New York, fool. This is where you're from. Uh, How yes. did you grow up? Yep. Uh, grew up, grew up uh, in Brooklyn. Oh. Uh, I went to went to school up the block for me when New York and Brooklyn was super multicultural. Like, I never even knew what racism was. I had black kids, white kids, uh, uh, Muslims, Asian. There was there was no ethnicity we didn't have, and it was it was a great time to grow up. I had no idea what racism was growing up. Uh, elementary school, middle school was cool. I didn't mean to hold your hand. I'm like over here mm-hmm. holding your um, hand. Sorry. In Brooklyn was cool during during lunch. We were allowed to leave the school at middle school. I went to this special school. It was super cool. So we'd be hitting the streets already. Like in that, middle school. In middle school, MS fifty one. <laughs> it was like a specialized school. I was in the rainbow program. I got special. Kicked, I got kicked out of the rainbow program three times, and three times the guy in the regular program was like this kid's too smart to be here like and he's not a bad kid like put him back oh. that was cool when you said special i was like what kind of special no like like advanced you're like something like gifted. magnet yeah Gav- got gotcha. you magnet gifted uh from there i went to uh severian all boys catholic school i got kicked out of i was gonna say how long did that last six months um they brought me they brought me into the the dean's office and actually you need to Re- talk rewind. into the microphone for Rewind a little bit. Um, I'm on my way to the lunchroom and somebody comes, runs over and grabs me. He's like, yo, nigga, they done grabbed everybody up because I was like, one of my dad was in 80s babies watching Commando and Rambo. So <laughs> I loved knives. So I bought, there was this Smoky Mountain Knives Company. I bought like 80 knives for 20 bucks. I just like to play with them. I used to throw mm-hmm. them on my wall. So then I had too many. So I was selling them, right? 
So <laughs> apparently, yeah. that was a no. That was a no no in school. You can't sell knives to other kids <laughs> at school. But I wasn't even like entrepreneur yet. I just wanted to make my money back that I spent on knives. Mm-hmm. Too many. So they grabbed me and they're like, "Yo, nigga, they rounding everybody up that bought a knife, sold a knife. Like, if you got anything in your locker, so I, I, I run to my locker." There's nobody in the hallways. It was a little sixth grader. They had elementary school, like, in the school, mm-hmm. right? And I grabbed him, and I slammed him up against him. Where's your locker? You, you're going to put my jacket in your locker. I had, like, four knives in my jacket. <laughs> put it in his locker. They take me to the office. They had a flow chart. Like, I was the kingpin. <laughs> and, like, mind you, it's I just find it amusing because I wasn't trying to do anything illegal. Like, mm-hmm. I was just a stupid You were a kid. kid. I was just a stupid kid, right? So they have a flow chart. Like, I was this godfather, like, and he's like, every one of those guys gave your name. And, and uh, we heard you have a second locker, and uh, we're, let's go to your locker right now and check it out. So we go and check that out. It's February, and he's like, there's no jacket. Where's your jacket? You definitely have a second locker. I was like, man, Brooklyn, dog, we don't need no jacket, man. I'm like 13 years old, biggest fucking head in the world. Get kicked out of school. Um, so I go from... Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, which was all Italians. I'm talking about like mafia, like like, like mm-hmm. the, the hairstyle slicked <laughs> back, like gelled helmets, to to John Dewey High School, all the way across the street from Marlboro Projects. And the funny thing is, like, I kind of get in where I fit in. It don't really matter where I go, cause I just even to this day, I just stay me. I stay in my lane. Whoever I am, I'm okay with. So again, racism or that, I didn't see none of that. Uh, right when I graduated nursing school, it was right before I took my boards. I remember I'm talking to one of my best friends, Derek Braun, and his dad is a, a land a landlord all over South Florida. He has places all over in Miami and Broward. And he's like, yo, we got this gym. We wanna like give you this gym. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I'm gonna give you a gym. So they take me down like by 27 and Sheridan and they have a full like uh what do they call it like fully stocked i don't know what you call it like all the weights and all mm-hmm. the equipment they had a business running already and i guess that guy was in the military he got shipped off so he was giving up his lease they owned all the equipment in the place it had two floors space for a juice bar and all this and they're like yeah it's yours you just got to sign the lease and i'm like well you don't need an owner you need a manager you just get somebody to manage it and they're like no, no no it's yours if you want it and i'm like i can't do it what do, you, what do you mean you can't do it? I said, I can't do it. I said, I, I'm going to school. I can't put time into this and time into school. I got to finish school. All right. They offered me that place another two times. I kept saying no. Then I was right about to graduate and they ordered, they, my friend Derek called me on the phone and he's like, yo, Flop. He's like, my dad just showed me the spot and we decided it's going to be perfect for you. Why don't you come check it out? So I come checked it out and it's actually where my gym is now. And it was just four walls. <laughs> it was It was perfect. It was a karate studio. It was just four walls and a floor. And I was like, all right, cool. And they're like, this is the spot for you. And I'm like, cool. Like, see you later. I got to (laughs) graduate. And like, left. Like, didn't ask anything about it. I'm about to graduate and they come back to me like, hey. And my my friend calls me three-way with his dad. And his dad's like, hey, Derek, find out what the fuck Jose needs, give it to him, and let's get him in this spot. So I'm like, all right, cool. So the dad hangs up, and he's like, you heard my dad. What do you need? And I'm like, dude, I got I to gotta pass my boards next month. I got to get a job. You figure, like, two, three months. That's four months. And I'm like, you got to give me, like, six months free. Thinking, like, it's never going to happen. Nobody's going to give somebody six months free. So the fucker said yes. It's like, all right, I guess I'm opening up a gym. Cool, let's do this. Uh... So I get to work, and uh, and of course I'm calling some of my uh, older friends, guys that own this gym, other trainers, guys around. And my friend was the uh, owner of Fifth Street, Fifth Street Gym. So the old gym that Muhammad Ali came mm-hmm. from. It's how I know Angelo Dundee from from this man, Matt Bayamonte. And Matt calls me. He's like, it's too small, 2,500 square feet. He's like, it's too small. Mind you, one of my best friends is an interior designer, and she sketched out the whole thing and how it would work. And everything, like sitting down with me, telling her what I needed, how we were going to do it. So he's like, hey, my parents live over there, and I'm actually headed to Hollywood now. He's like, meet me at your spot. Let me check it out. So he comes and checks out my spot. I show him the drawings. 
He looks at the spot and he's like, fuck. He's like, flock, yours is shaped different than my 2400. He's like, this could work. Cool. So he's looking and he's like, but that's that's a little expensive. Ask, ask him to cut the price. And I'm like, dude, nigga just gave me six months free. He's like, so? What's the worst he says? No, you already got the six months free. So I asked the fucker for the, to lower the price, and I said, hey, you want me to be successful? You want me to stay in your spot? You want me to pay the rent every month? I said, give me, give me a chance. Give me some lifeline. And the fucker gave it to me. So now I graduated. I passed my boards. I never fail, I've never failed a test in nursing or paramedic whatsoever, ever. Just every single one I passed. Passed my boards with flying colors. And I'm opening up my gym. I'm building shit. And that year I was in school. So I went from making $75,000 a year between two jobs, working seven days a week, which isn't bad. It's not bad. I was making mm-hmm. an higher living, you know, to 15000 I could barely, like, cover my mortgage. If my kids weren't at, well, my kid, I only had one daughter at the time, wasn't at my house. I was eating tuna, can, tuna fish straight out the can with, like, a potato from the microwave, like, the very bottom bare basics because that's what I can afford and it doesn't matter what it takes. You just got to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I started building my gym, it took about two months of a build out, paint the floor, uh, paint the walls, uh, get the mats for the floor, build my ring. Like money fell from the sky. It just, it just appeared. I didn't know where it was going to come from. I just figured whatever it was going to take, I would figure it out. And at that time, I had been teaching since 06. This was 14. So I was teaching uh, eight years. And I had done a lot of good. And many times, people, kids, adults, parents, whoever it was, were in need. And I never hesitated just to give. I didn't ask what they were going to give back. And these people came out of the woodwork to help me. And people I hadn't spoken to in years came by like, oh, this is cool. And they all did the the same kind of like MO. You would think like I would know. They're like, oh, yeah, let me check out your gym. Oh, what do you need? Like, how much is this going to cost? How much is that going to cost? Eh. Okay, here, I'll give it to you. And like it was just to me, it's just God. I always say that God God meant me to do this. And I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Um. So open my gym six months later. My goal after six months of opening my gym was to be in the uh, in the black. In the black, yeah. In the black, right? I just wanted a zero dollar balance sheet. I wanted anybody who had helped me to be paid back. And at six months, I had that and ten grand in the in the bank to pay for the the lease and whatever it was that I had to pay for, which was cool. Um, and I was working like thirty six hour days. I know. <laughs> it's only 24 hours in a day. Not when right? you own your own business. Not when you own your own business. So I was working at the gym in the morning. I was taking care of my kid in the afternoon. And then I was going back to work overnight in the emergency room. And then back the next morning to work at the gym. Um, I would take like a 10-minute nap. It got, I got into two car accidents driving home. No, I got into two car accidents driving to the gym. Both of them were on the same block, two blocks away from the gym, falling asleep. I used, to pull, I used to pull up at red lights or, or at lights, hoping it would take turn red so I could take a nap. But it's, it's what it took to be a successful father, a successful entrepreneur, and a successful nurse. I had to do what I had to do. Um, I wound up getting into trouble in 2018 with... Uh, my baby mama, uh, we were we were at a police station where the judge ordered us to change uh, custody of the baby when, when she would drop her off by my house. And allegedly, I took her phone out of her pocket and I threw it in the bushes. I didn't break the phone. I didn't hit her. I didn't do anything. And that was like the end of my life, like instantly. I got charged with a third degree felony robbery. I lost, uh, my license was technically intact because you're innocent until proven guilty. But OSHA, the Occupational Safety and, Haz- mm-hmm. Safety and Hazard Association, said you're a risk because we don't know what's true and what's not. And so they couldn't suspend my license, but they ordered me not to work with patients. So overnight, I lost my job as a nurse, which was supporting my household. Um, 
I had to, uh, what do they call it? Um, swallow my pride. And I had to ask my mommy at 35 years old if she could help me out because I had a mortgage and kids. And it was the most painful and uh, demoralizing thing that could ever happen to me. But God bless, I had a mommy that could help me. And she was affluent enough. She helped me out with my mortgage for that year. And at the end of the year, I went to uh, I went to my accountant to do my taxes. And he said, Flock, you had a 40% increase in your business. So the energy that I was using to be a nurse was transferred 100% into being an entrepreneur and a boxing trainer. And the business absolutely flourished. So now that was the first year I called my mom right after leaving the account. I was like, Mom, I'm good. I love you. I'm going to pay you back. And I got this. Like, I can cover my bills now. And then that was the beginning of, like, seeing the light. And the whole time, I'm, like, I'm fighting these charges, and I'm fighting these charges. And, like, baby mama was, like, my lawyer My lawyer said to me one day, he says, Flock, you got, like, baby mamas, and you got the ones that are, like, call the cops, right? And then you got the ones that are, like, nah, 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 nothing happened. And those are, like, the good ones. Or you got the other ones that are, like, oh, I called by accident. He's, like, those are the best ones. And then you got the ones that are like, nah, fuck him. Go to jail. He hit me. He's like, and then you got yours. Because <laughs> like, yours is like even worse. Like she was trying to cause us all sorts of problems. She tried to cause my lawyer problems. She called the... the uh, Bar association. The bar. No, she called the DA. Uh, no, the PA, the prosecuting uh-huh. attorneys. The, she called the DA. And my lawyer had said to her after we were still fighting the family trial. And uh, so my family trial and my... Uh, my criminal trial were, were running congruent, right? And my lawyer says to her, hey, don't you think, like, you'll get more money in child support if he's working as a nurse? She called the DA, and she's like, they're trying to sway my testimony. And my lawyer said this in front of her lawyer, and her lawyer, my lawyer was like to the DA, like, absolutely not. Her Her lawyer, her attorney was present when I said it, and in no way was it meant to sway her testimony. So um, three years later, that case was was washed away as it should be. And I, at that point, I realized, like, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm no longer a nurse. I have a, a, better, a better quality of life for my, my family and myself. I worked less hours, and I made good money enough to support my household. And... It's what God meant me to be. I do so much good at a boxing gym. It's like kind of like sounds like nothing, like nothing. It's just some little like street sport where guys punch each other and girls Mm -hmm. punch each other in their face. And it's so much more than that when you come to my place. And that's why I named my gym like not even think I don't even know where the name came from. But like I'm so much about the community. I'm so much about like can't we all just get along like men women color like i don't care about none of that and when you walk into my gym you can really really see it it really stands for itself and uh that's my story that's okay, badass well, we i'm like yeah flock was an interesting guy i didn't know some of those things which is surprising to me i mean i know i know the bad like i know I know the bad stuff, Flock. I mean, because we've had those conversations at length, and I know that you're, you know, you're a very smart dude. I mean, the boxing stuff, though, along the way, we always talk about those opportunities where you can go left or you can go right. And I know you mentioned having, you know, a guidance counselor that cared enough to kind of yoke you up real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? And I know now you kind of take that and you pay that forward. But, like, there are moments when you're talking and I feel like you and Lenny are spirit animals. High five. <laughs> it, you know, it's it, just listening to his story, you can see the, the, the guarantee that he's going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Because he, he, you know, no matter what adversity was thrown in front of him, mm-hmm. he got up every day and he did what he had to do. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. I, that's, that's that's it, you know. I I like to have a planned day, but, you know, you plan your day, and then 
you plan for shit to go wrong or shit to happen. And, you know, you can't. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to. I mean, we deal with, you know, computers and this and programs and all kinds of different shit. And shit happens. Your car breaks, your, you know, your software dies. It's, it's daily. And I have people that work for me in different places. And it's like, you know, they, they like freak out. I'm like, well, what are you freaking out about? You know, shit breaks, shit happens. You you put it down and you move on and, and that's it. And that's what you've done. And, you know, it's it's great to see people paying it forward. Well, that and also like when you listen to a story like Flacco and, and I think a lot of the people that have have come through with Man TF Up, there's that pivot because it's not just shit that happens every day in business. It's life happens. Yes. Right. Yes. And, you know, sometimes those life things like that's the difference between success and failure right you talk about it all the time Lenny's a big believer in you know the biggest mistake you make in life is fearing failing yeah right like because fear of failure transfers into fear of fear of success fear of failure forces you to not try and if you don't try you can't win mm -hmm. so absolutely yeah and with that being said it's kind of like you know life's gonna throw shit at you and there's gonna be curve balls and it's gonna hurt yeah, and it, it's how do you kind of rally? How do you man the how do you man the fuck up? What does that look like? You know, it's coming down, and when you're, I know you mentioned two moms. Is one a stepmother? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I want to clarify before somebody's like, I want to, I want to, out of his I want to say you did that to me one time. I think my my mom. So when I say my mom, I'm I'm ninety percent of the time talking about my stepmom. She raised me from when I was four years old, and my mother, my biological mother, died. I left when I was four. Um, when I was 14, she had my little brother. I came back into her life for everything. She mm -hmm. was living in Florida. And uh, she she was, my, my stepmother is a giant uh, building block in the foundation of my success. Because without my stepmother and my stepmother's family, who is my family, like, I would have never had the foundation of mm -hmm. it. And that's, that's, I think, key. Like, whether it be a group of people, a village, or, like, somebody's lucky enough to have that one person to say that one thing that changes you. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's what it comes down to, is just believing in yourself and, and not accepting. I like I like Wayne Dyer when you were talking about shit happens and things get in the way. And uh, in, one of his, in one of his CDs that I was listening to, he says, the earth never cries about a tree being blown away. Like, you just, you just move. The tree is just no longer there. Mm -hmm. If you focus on the tree being there before, you can never focus on getting it over. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Just like whatever happens, like it's going to be that thing. That thing, you can't undo that thing. And you can think about the future, but you can't dwell on that either because then you're so busy looking over there, you never do what you have to yeah. do here. Yeah, or you're, you're so busy gauging where you're not. Like, I know a lot of people yeah. do that in relationships. Like, I, I always use that as a reference point, like, in the sense of you're so worried about where you're not at in your relationship. We've been dating for this amount of time. Why are we not living together? Why are, Instead of enjoying the moment and really just being present in what you have and realizing that this is a gift. And we do that in careers. Why am I not here? Why have I not been promoted as opposed to really just focusing? Uh, I, I, think, I think that is uh, most exemplified by Michael Phelps. And he, I remember him being quoted saying, losers look at winners and winners look at the finish line. And I was lucky enough to have uh, my uncle, my uncle Carl, who's one of my mentors uh, and somebody I really look up to, a blue collar guy, construction company in New York, multi-million dollar company, eventually a big house. And I remember he bought, he bought this little beat up rundown ranch on the water in Long Island in New York and he tore it down and built a castle and the first time I went after the house was finished I pull up at his house and I'm like yeah nigga you did this shit look at this crib nigga he grabbed me by the arm and he pulled me close and he whispered in my ear cause like that's just the kind of dude he was and he was like don't you never look at nobody else's shit you hear me focus on yourself threw me off and walked away and I'm like 17 years old like uh High five. <laughs> <laughs> and but that that message and that man and so many of his messages have stuck with me. And it was a way of saying, like, like you said, be be present. 
and be present now and be happy no matter what it is that you have. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm always happy for friends and family and people I know that have lots of, of things and they're super successful and like, great. And then like back to the mirror and back to like my world. And I recreate that world every day as much as I can for that world to be the best it can be. And I'm okay with that. I love it though, because I'm thinking as Flacco saying this, like I used to get, so I used to buy Flacco wife beaters. Because Flacco would wear the same raggedy, you know dirty, what? God old bless stretch. my wife's soul. <laughs> I had an event April second, and I'm on my way here. And my wife wanted to go to Walmart, and I worked out before I took her to Walmart, and I was running like right on time. So like I'm eating a roasted chicken, so then I don't eat bad food because I'm working out like in the car, like as I'm driving here, and like spilled stuff on myself, and like I run to CVS to go buy one. I'm on the phone with my wife, and I'm like. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. We must not have any. My wife's like, babe, I think I got two more in the trunk. Remember the event the other day? And we put that striped bag because we didn't know what you were going to be doing. <laughs> so, like, I would have. And, like, I only went to buy one because I was thinking podcasts. Like, and then I'm like, no, she said shoot. And I'm like, I'm going to be on this camera, like, <laughs> like bald, like, stained shirts. Like, Did I say it? Because Flacco's just that dude who's not concerned and you know in south florida i think of all places and it's not that he doesn't have access to and i'm not talking about you like you're not here he's extremely humble like some of the people he's trained are some of the biggest athletes on the planet i trained kimmy <laughs> let, me, <laughs> like, is, let me remove the word is. athlete from that sentence yeah. then but she but, is one of the most talented most beautiful well thank you can you let me finish please young ladies that can I you just for five seconds meeting and she was no, definitely one of the people on the list that helped me to, to recognize how great I could be. And I would definitely give her a round of applause oh, and say, thanks, super happy that she came into my life, you know? But the thing that I love, though, is the fact that surrounded by all of that, like, Flacco's not concerned with the big dollar, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the, the, the big payday at the end. That's not, that's never been what's motivated him. Flacco trained me six days a week for free. For free. And at the time, I was nowhere near as... If you guys... <laughs> if we can get her to stand up and show what she looks like no, in this now movie. versus what I look like before, absolutely not. Yeah. Stop. If, if it we, wasn't free. Really he was not. enjoying it, every minute of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Did you see how many videos I showed you? <laughs> no shit. Shut up. Every oh guy God. in town, can I come to your gym? <laughs> no, but I mean... Is she there every day? Mind you, <laughs> guys, guys, don't, don't step unless you have under 6% body fat. Kimmy does not... <laughs> Kimmy does not deal with anything but ripples and curves and, and like, rock hard, like, abs. Shut up, Flacco, and although he's not lying. Um, <laughs> but listen, no, I mean, and that's just something that I absolutely love. And even hearing him tell his story, you know, you have the nursing, you have all of these things. But finding your passion in life really does kind of supersede all of that. And then looking and going repeatedly, you said, it took care of my family. So long as my family's good, so long as I can keep a roof over our house, the bills are paid and we're comfortable, and comfortable is a relative term, being happy and being fulfilled in what he's doing clearly trumps, you know, the big house on the Sound in Long Island or yeah. whatever. I mean, if if and when it's coming, because it's coming, Flacco, like I, I, I do think, see that for you, but it's just not, that's not what you prioritize. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think I think more than anything, and I try, I try and share this lesson with like the kids on my team especially. At the end of every day, at the end of every gym, I have a two and a half hour program with my youth. I do like a little mantra, like everybody sticks their hand in and I talk to them. And I talk to them not just like how to be successful in boxing, or a sport, but it all transcends life and sport and like what you have to be careful of. And one of the things I tell them is take pride in everything you do. Don't just take pride in what you do. No matter what it is you're doing, take pride in that. I own I own my boxing gym and I have I have eight employees and I could very easily point my finger and be like, when my bathroom gets stocked up. Like, hey, go clean that shit up. Like, literally, go clean that shit up. But before I do that, like, why am I going to ask somebody else to do something like that because I wouldn't do it? Like, it's my business. So, like, mm -hmm. I'll always be the first one. Like, the dirty job at my gym, like, I'm going to go do. And the young lady one time, she, uh, one of my employees, she said to me, she was like, yeah, I ain't doing that. And I was like, unless I'm not here. And I was like, you better remember that I'm doing this because I choose to. 
But if you're here in the gym and I'm not here and that toilet floor, you better stick your fucking hand and grab that shit. Because <laughs> otherwise you don't have a job. There's a difference. I'm not above anybody. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't be above me either. Like, we're just people. You know? In the end, like, as a nurse, like, I wipe... Actually, being a nurse and a paramedic, my, my dad was sick. My dad died in 2012. And one of the proudest moments of my life and our relationship was being able to clean my dad. And I say that because my dad was like, like, just like me, Kimmy, like no chill zone, like no matter what it was, like he was not embarrassed. And when he was sick, I saw him embarrassed mm. for the first time my entire life. And to be able to walk over to my dad and fucking wipe his ass and do IVs and take care of him was like one of the proudest moments of my life. Like. It was truly one of those full circle moments where I was like, I got you. Like, you wiped me. You took care of me. And uh, I had the, I had the, uh, I, I was lucky enough that when my dad passed away, they declared him dead and everything. Like, I pulled every IV out of his arm. I pulled his, to his uh, tube out of his mouth. And I cleaned him up and I covered him up and I said bye. Like, and it was definitely like, a huge amount of closure that not everybody gets to to have that experience with their family and loved ones and uh we cremated him we had a we had a mass actually my my father i talk about mentors like my father was i don't know you're manhandling that microphone uh my my dad taught me to be a good man. My dad was a truck driver, worked two, three jobs always to support us. Like I said, I grew up with my dad and my stepmom. Like goes to show you there was a lot of troubled history in our past. And uh when he died, he was cremated. We didn't have a funeral at a funeral home. We had one mass at our church, this beautiful church, Immaculate Heart of Mary, um, in New York on uh East Fifth and Fort Hamilton. <laughs> and in this beautiful, like regal stone that's normally empty from the neighborhood because our society is much less religious than we were were. And I was here in Florida living and I had a friend of mine back in Brooklyn that I asked him to put up like three posters letting people know my dad died at the supermarket. Um, I, don't, I don't remember the other two places. And my friend printed 30 of them and had them laminated and like went like five miles each direction, like stapling them. And at his mass, I had 300 people standing tall, standing room only at a church that never fills. And after I cried at the eulogy, telling the story about my dad, like I had so many people come up to me and share like, oh man, you know, when my son had had cancer and chemo and I was too small, your dad would come after work and carry him up the stairs. Oh, your dad used to take my mom shopping. Oh, your dad fixed my tire one day. I mean, I had no idea who 90% of the people was. And up <coughs> until that moment, like, I've always heard that you gotta do better than your parents. You gotta do t better than your parents. 10% better than your parents. You know, this way they didn't, they didn't fail at anything. So up until that point, my focus was on money. And after that moment, I said, I have to make sure that I am a good man because I found so much solace in knowing that my father was a good man. And I knew already, but to hear other people say it, I said, mm -hmm. I, I need to do this for my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like my daughter's going to have to hear this from other people because it'll, it'll help ease her pain knowing how good her, of a man her father was. So as much as I try and be successful, my goal is to be a good man. You know, good to my family, good to my peers, good to my neighbors, just to be a good man. Like, it's definitely one of my focuses in life. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, you're focused on being a pain in the ass. Can we see your ass? Can you stand up? Oh, my up? God. <laughs> you should not have had. Like, how are you going to go from talking about your dad to that? And by the way, that's such a. Dad would have been so proud of me. 
dad would have been so <laughs> proud of me for trying to, to try and exemplify how beautiful okay, of a you young stop? lady you are. Like, but in Florida, we don't do that. Have you noticed? Like every time he references New York, he's gonna give you all the cross streets, the exact number of where they were. <laughs> like in Florida, we don't do it. I know Lenny, you I could. heard you. I, know, I heard I was you. Laughing. I, 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 I was felt such you. a New York. I, I such felt a New York you being thing like nobody gives a shit. We'll block it. No, I just literally you gave the cross street, and it's just it's such a New York thing. And somebody might actually be like, oh my god, I know that church, but it makes me laugh like when you do it like you're just this he's also a poet which always can we need to talk briefly about the fact that as a boxer as a hoodlum as a dope a former dope boy as a person who has clearly been around his fair share of criminals um you're also like you're a poet and i share that clearly with clearly absolutely intelligent um, and we know this i i was actually asked to speak and represent uh, the program for my associate's degree in nursing and my bachelor's degree in nursing. Both my classes voted me to speak. Um, and poetry is great. I think um, I think everybody should, should write and speak and be okay with poetry because we all have poetry in us. We all have poetry in our souls. We all have something we want to share and speak about. And if you love it, like, share it with the world. And if you hate it, like, Fucking say it. Like, there's yeah. Like, no, I just think it's when we talk about manning the fuck up, though, and that's one of those things where it's like, what's the definition of a man? Like, we, we get into this often. We talk about therapy and, I you know, therapy going in. Every Friday, <laughs> Paul, my dude, Paul. <laughs> But it's important, but it's it's breaking down. Like you you mentioned it before we started this. How do we get to this equal place? But then you have sugar. Like there's so many, it, it, there's so many different dynamics to the I mean, conversation. I, I, I think it just breaks down to love, right? Like really, like 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 at the bottom. And I think that's man in the fuck. I think man in the fuck up. If you, when I think about the term and I think about like what it is as a man, and it's to accept your strengths. For strengths, your weaknesses, for weaknesses, work on what you can change and accept what you can't. Mm -hmm. I think that's the definition of manning the fuck up. Just do what you have to do. You know? I think I think we know. I think we all know like what's the right thing inherently, you know? Do we? Do we? I think so. I don't know. I have quite a little twisted thought about yeah, what's I was about to say Yeah, but yeah. you ain't you ain't out flipping turtles over and poking holes in there. No, no. I mean, you know, <laughs> I listen, mean that right that's I, wrong, right? That's absolutely that's wrong. There's, <laughs> clearly, there's clearly some right and wrong things. Yeah. And, you know, it's but today's society is so messed up and it's funny you touched on something I said the other day about, you know, this whole equal relationship to 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 if if you step back and love somebody, you're gonna do whatever you have to to make that person happy, and vice versa. And it might not try. be 50 50. Yeah, it might not be 50 50. It will never be 50 50. But, you know, this person might be happy with just doing this. And if their person's happy just doing this, then, then it's fine. But when you go into it with this mindset of you have to have everything equal, it, it, it hurts what really truly could be mm -hmm. yeah. if you if you go into it without any expectations. Well, well I think it comes down to um, to like like not boundaries, but like fitting in a box. Like what is equal? And we talked about it before. We were talking about like mm -hmm. NBA versus WNBA mm -hmm. versus the soccer league mm -hmm. versus the soccer league, like. And I would think that's equal. I would think that's fair. Like, if if the girls that put more asses in the seats got paid more than the guys, I think that's fair. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's a there's a basic, and we don't have to put a, a, a bound borders on everything. We and we don't have to outline and structure. Well, it has to be this, 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 and this. I think it's just. Oh, there was a there was a a. a um, like, fuck, what's the word? When when somebody goes and discovers, like back in the day, when they discover new lands, uh, an expedition. Yeah, like there was a guy who was sent to to find out why America was so great. No, we're, we're talking about the United States of America. My wife is our Ar Ar Argentinian, and when I, we I say like America as the USA, she's <laughs> like, but we're American too. We're South American. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm I'm getting better. Continent. I'm getting better <laughs> at uh, describing us as the United the United people. States. Yes. And he, I forgot what expedition person it was, uh, and he came back and he said America is so great because it is so good. When America ceases to be so good, it will cease to be so great. Mm -hmm. And I think we see a lot of that today. Yeah. And, and mainly by Americans. Well, yeah. yeah. Everybody I, else still feels everybody that comes here from other countries and moves here and makes a life here realizes that it's still great here the people that aren't realizing it is the people that were born and raised here that's a lot of what's going on today is the you know it's and you see it a lot, Kimmy. The the. Why are you addressing me? I say this all the fucking time. I know, but like, I'm, I'm just addressing you so you can give me some feedback. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm saying no. I mean, yeah. I told you I have an issue when it comes to democracy. Like democracy yeah. at its forget core. about the democracy. What do you mean? I'm That's talking what makes about us great. I'm talking about the people. I'm talking about when I grew up. You know, America was always you know, and everybody loved America no matter what. There was no, nobody ever said bad, nobody who was from this country ever said bad things about this country. Ever. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Growing up, my dad was big on that. Like, Yeah, nobody. I would I die mean, for the country. I would, like, you know, super and, nationalist. And pride. nowadays, you have a lot of people who are like, this could be national. better than this, could be this, could this, yeah, you know, it's just. It American pride, but not nationalism. Yeah, that, that's, what it, that's what I meant. Nationalism yeah, is it's, a different it's, word. It's a problem <laughs> today. It's a problem. No, but I, I understand that. I think, though, that a big part of what makes us great, and we've talked about this, is is democracy and was taking pride in who we are. And that's what people look to. When people come here, that whole, like, equal opportunity and you can make, you know, a mountain out of a mo Like, you can be anything you want and educate and all of these but things. That, I, I personally think that's poisoned our youth as much as it's preserved them. With you can be whatever you want and you should find your passion and do your passion it's like we have children with no direction because they can be whatever they want to be but they have such a short attention span they have no idea what it is to put the work in mm -hmm. <laughs> we've talked about that at length but you you're it's interesting that you say that though because you are literally a walking example of Finding your passion and doing it, no, and I like, I yeah, but what did he have to do to shit. get there? I never. Well, no, gave I know a that, shit. but that's what I'm saying. So you can, like, right? No, but but the difference was I never cared. Like, I was never throughout my path. I was never like I need to find, yeah, what it is that I do. Well, and you would have done I whatever was, just to I make was, sure I that was everybody grounded was good. in reality. That was like. I moved out of my house when I was 19 and rent was was $800 a month and mm -hmm. I had to make $800 yeah. a month. At the end of the day, I had to make $800 a month just to just to to sleep. Mm -hmm. Plus I had to to buy food and buy clothes or or steal clothes. Uh whatever it was. Well, you had a but you had a work ethic and I, I understand right. what you're so saying. That, but I think you also realized early on that if you didn't like it, you were not going to be good at it. You said it about school. Like, the stuff that I liked, I excelled at. The stuff that didn't really catch my interest, not so much. So it is what it is. I think when you can understand that about who you are and you start to pursue your passions, I'm similar in the fact that I'm great at service industry jobs, but it's not what so I want. to So you're a do. servicer? No, I'm not a servicer. I'm okay, yeah, sure. I, I, if you mean waiting fucking table, smart ass, and bartending, yes. Stop no, making just... this. Stop it. Because <laughs> we're going to end up fighting, and I know that you're a little injured right now, and I could probably hurt you. Is that a promise? Yes, it's a promise. I will kick you with my shoe. But, like, my point is, as we discuss this, like, you know, I don't think that that's what's crippling our children. I think what's crippling our children is the phone and social media. So telling them they can be whatever they connected. want and this is what they aspire to. It is connected, but it goes back to the point that you made earlier and a point that Lenny has made repeatedly. It's also what they see at home. You had a father who worked three jobs, right? Yeah. You had people that sat there and no matter what got on your ass and they expected you to at least Take care maximize of your potential though. Like you had people that saw it in you and pushed you to tap into it, whether that yep. was in school, whether it was in boxing, whether it's in business or whatever, right? That the universe will respond to you. If you have gifts and you're surrounded by the right people, 
the universe will respond so and will what, put things it, in your what path. What happens when you're not surrounded by the right people? Well, that's but that's discernment. Because Flacco, as crazy as you are, you have incredible people. Like Flacco, you have. Ch I've literally left your gym and not spoken to you for three weeks, but I can't get rid of you because I love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And some people are like that. I fight with Lenny relentlessly. Like there are times when I I've made her I'm cry. Never going guys, back there. guys, I would like you to know that she will not answer a text. Or a phone <laughs> phone, but I will not quit on her. But, but so, you, like, I know that eventually I'll catch her in the mood, a glass of wine, some downtime. Her guard will be down, and I'm back in. And I might, I might text him I back. Know I'm but back no. in. But my point is, this: you're saying that so vaguely on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we need to clarify. It just means he's back in my life, people. Like, I'll uh -huh. return a text message. He's very married. Flacco is my brother. Like, I have to clarify all of these things with these. But Lenny, the same way though. Like, there are times when I leave here and I'm like, I cannot do this. I cannot. I cannot have another one of these conversations. But Lenny's such an incredibly incredible human being he's a he's a businessman and i like i'm surrounded by amazing people y'all get on my nerves but you a bring out the best in me so if but you're you surround yourself with i do and so do you and and so. that's the universe responds but you yes. gotta be aware of it like i know what lenny brings to the table flacco i know what an incredible human being you are like so you know you have to be able to look at things and go does the good outweigh the bad but these are again things that you're you're taught by the people in your life so that's why i think it's important that you have a mentorship program and everything else because it's like when you tell people lenny says it all the time like yeah pursue your passions right like it, it's not always going to happen you're not always going to love what you do but eventually you will get to that place if you do it you know what i'm saying yeah that the universe will come yeah. full circle and it's what happened in your situation and now everything sure. you were meant to do is happening, but it's not because like you literally had to lose your nursing job. Yeah, you know what I mean well, because your baby mama had to do some dumb shit. Like, that, look at how the universe no, played I, that. I one I had to do some dumb shit. Oh yeah, you did. I lost my mind in the middle, allegedly, of a police station, <laughs> and like, in no way did. I, and that's why I seeked out the therapist eventually, like because I would literally like have a fuck it moment, and my fucking mm -hmm. moments were like. Seriously detrimental? Yeah, like running from a cop at 120 miles on a motorcycle when you just got on for the first time six months before. Like, what are delusions of grandeur? Like, I'm this mm -hmm. guy and, like, maybe I'm not. But uh, it was it all comes down to, to being taught that it's all about you. It's all about you, your boundaries, and your aspirations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who's around you, what's around you, how it's around you. It's always all about you. That That's my... So would you say that manning the fuck up is holding yourself accountable? Absolutely. So like that, how do you how do you teach people that though? Like, cause that that I think is more what you're talking about. It's like you have a you have this generation of kind of you know. I told all of these stories today, and I'll say I'll say this little little snippet, and this is the proudest moment of my hat life, and it happened yesterday, when my daughter texted me, Dad, I want you to come on my class trip. My daughter is fourteen. You have to see her. Uh, my daughter is 14, and she is absolutely beautiful, straight-A student. She was in competitive dance, competitive figure skating. She played piano. She did cheerleading. And when my daughter said to me, Dad, I want you to come on my school trip with me. You got to do this, like, background check. I was like, I'm successful. When my 14-year-old daughter wants to bring me on her trip, like, like, yes. Like, I'm yeah. That that was like that is a dream. <laughs> the proud. I have that dream every day. <laughs> like, My daughter won't even like. Nah, I don't want to go to dinner, Dad. <laughs> let's. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Nah, sorry. He also named his company Man TF Up and would pick her up in a truck that had a very large man the fuck up bull on the side of it at school, and you know. Yeah, well, whatever. Miranda would be like everybody else thought it was cool, but his daughter was like, Dad. Yeah. Why? Yeah, Why do you have to pick me up? She's in that? fifteen, so I. Yeah. That's that, that's the other thing with our with our culture and uh, mm -hmm. the United States and our youth. You know, I would have given anything to have my dad tell me like, "Oh, listen, I'm a truck driver. You're gonna be a truck driver. This is how you do it. This is how you make money, and let's go do it." And too much of our youth, and it goes back to me saying that that 
the options are as much of a curse as they are a blessing. You have so many, so many people that have a, a, have come from nothing and blazed the path and built something. Let's say a business. Let's say I I don't know what man the fuck up is worth. Let's say it's worth fucking ten million dollars. And you're like, all right, baby, like, look, you can take this over. This is how you do it. When I die, you don't need to be on the mic being the man, the fuck up guy. But this is how you get in the red. This is how you get in the black. This is mm-hmm. how you make money. Have this guy. Focus on this. And and they're like, nah, I want to I wanna be a dancer, which is cool. Go be a dancer and learn that the business can make money on its own. Because in the end, that's the point of a business. It's not to have me with the hand pads and the boxing ring or you behind the mic, it's to be have somebody behind the mic and somebody behind the boxing ring, and we're out in fucking Cuba drinking martinis <laughs> and, and having yeah. a blast. Yeah. Like, that's the goal. That's my goal as, as at my gym is to work less. Mm-hmm. Um, to work less and produce more. And yeah. do that's, that. You got to put... you. But you got to put in the time, and you have. You've worked. Yeah, you got to put it You've in the front end. You've worked the 36-hour days. You got to put it into the front end. And yeah. At any given day, I'm ready I'm ready to drop my kids with my wife, and I'm ready to run to the gym and go cover who I have to because I know what it takes to succeed. Yeah. I don't think I've met too many people that can keep up with me on a daily. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, I mean... It, that, it's that's just, like millionaire morning shit. That's it, like, you know, you get up. I get up at five thirty in the morning. I'm starting my day. I'm doing stuff by by seven thirty. I've already done a shit ton of stuff, and you know, I don't get home till I I leave the lights on at the house because it's my, dark when I leave and it's dark when I come home. Those are my favorite hours of the day, <laughs> and I love my children and I love my wife. But like, I have three kids, a wife, two dogs. 40 kids on my team, 10 competing. There is somebody always in need of mm-hmm. something. And my favorite time is taking a shower, washing my face, doing a 20-minute meditation, and making my kids breakfast and lunch. My wife's breakfast, I always cut her fruit in the morning and leave it in the fridge. And that is some of my most rewarding time in, in the mm-hmm. day. Every day. And nobody else is present but you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. But I have to ask you, though, like, so you have your mentorship program, and I know you train kids to box. And I think when we're talking, because we're talking about passions and pursuing your passions and all of these things and how it can be a muddled message, right? Because sometimes that can be limitless. It can be overwhelming. Well, what if I never find my passion? And that's the other thing. It's kind of an excuse, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought I was passionate about this, but then, no, I'm not passionate about that. And now I'm going to go do this over here. It's like the people who are eternal students, right? You have those folks who literally end up with 42 bachelor degrees in everything. <laughs> then they go on and they get a master's and then a doctorate. But it's mm-hmm. like, really, they just don't want to go be actual adults and and work or turn any of that into it. What do you say to these kids that are boxing and probably have aspirations of being the next, you know, Money Mayweather or whomever? It's not that you want to like, you know, poop in their fruit loops, but how do you give them a realistic expectation? I don't know if boxing works the same way, but we had uh, you know, a former first round NFL guy in last week, Mike Pouncey, and we were talking about, you know, just you know, here in South Florida, when we discuss, or I've told you this a million times, and you train some of these little kids. Like, when they tell you they're going to be a professional football player, right. they say that shit with conviction in their soul. Yeah. And it's because they've seen it happen for so many people around them. What do you say to these boxers or these kids that are coming up underneath you, you know, if it doesn't go the way that they hope? Um, like, how do you teach I, them to man the fuck up? I, I actually... I had my first uh, event, like basically me being a promoter. I put on my first show August 2nd. And my star player, my star fighter, uh, got stopped in the first round. He is number six in the country. And he has been uh, as high as number three for the last three years. And I don't know if... My answer is the exact answer to your question, right? But one thing that I always tell this kid, and this kid in particular, and this kid's got the goods. He's got the natural athletic ability. He's got the dedication and the work ethic. Mm -hmm. And 
he's got the technique and the talent, right? And I, I focus on him as a person, right? And I tell him, and I constantly reiterate the message that you are still you even when you're not boxing. I focus on the man more than I focus on the goal. Mm -hmm. You are still you when you're not boxing. Otherwise, when you weren't boxing, who would you be? So you got to be the best version of yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I do it. So if you have no plan B, that's okay. And if you have a plan B, that's okay. Because your path and his path and his path and my path are all different. Mm -hmm. And maybe we come to success, and I say it with air quotes because everybody's version of success, success is, is different. different. Yeah. Right? Maybe we all get to it a different way. And at the end of the day, you got to be okay with yourself. Not just with what you did or what you didn't do, but you have to be okay with yourself. So in order to promote that, that like, how do you do it, like, when I have kids that say it, and, and I think we're talking about like those those like kind of like freezy kids that come mm -hmm. in like like that have been groomed and they have the athletic ability and they have everything in line for mm -hmm. them to do it the right way. And they've seen those people do it before them. And then you got other kids that play at some random school in Weston mm -hmm. and they don't have any of that to, to look at as a guide to look at like I have to perform in order to be successful like there's two versions of that kid the kid saying like I know what I have to do cuz he's seen it yeah i think my bigger concern is or how do you how do you take this opportunity you have these kids that are so willing to come in and commit to training right uh -huh. part of that has to do with you like you're setting an example for them like literally if they fall flat on their face and they can't box flaco you will be one of the male figures in their life that they will look to emulate right that's what happens with youth football coach it just it's what happens with yeah. anytime you have a mentor type role like when 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 the rug gets pulled out from underneath you you usually start searching for the other people that you would not mind being like right yeah. and, and what does their journey look like especially as a as a super uh what do you call that the youth that's like super uh if where they can be influenced easy uh i mean that's just there's that's a word good. Like, I mean, are you talking about, like, disenfranchised or... No, like a kid, like, like he's super, like... Impressionable? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. But how do you get them to, to turn everything they're willing to do? Because some kids are willing to do it for sport. Some people, some individuals have the work ethic when it's something they're passionate about, right? Some right. people have that intensity. But if that goes away... Are you sitting there encouraging them to put that away. towards something else? Though? Because if they had the ability to commit when it came to boxing, they'll have that same ability to do it for something else. Ish. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Lenny, yeah. it doesn't matter. How many businesses have you yeah, had? Yeah, but that... It's because there's also longevity. There, there's, there's doing it when it's fun and when you're winning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you hit a point where you're, you're like, you've passed all the guys that don't work hard enough to beat you. Mm-hmm. And they don't have the talent. And then you come to the middle section. So uh, my wife was reading a book. And it was talking about like an upside and inverse bell. And it's the people that hit the bottom and keep going that eventually succeed. Mm -hmm. Right? So like everybody's like having fun when they're up. And then like you start meeting like equal competition. Mm -hmm. Somebody with... Just as much in, in your This case. is life, though. Like, right. this is not just boxing. Yeah. This is it's, it's literally everything. in life. It's any sport. It's anything. So, like, but you're specifically bringing up kids, which is even, it's, like, even deeper, right? Like, when you're winning, it's fun. Like, when you're beating a, a three or four or a five-year-old, like, they're, or they want to play. And then when they lose, it's, like, the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like that with kids. And even as they get a little older, like, and so what happens when you hit that bottom of the belt? That, that's when it's important to have that mentor. Mm -hmm. And it's important to have that somebody that you've developed that trust relationship with. It's like, okay, do you want to be one of those people that go like this mm -hmm. and back up and start something else and they're great when they're starting up and then they hit this and then they start something again? Or do you want to go through that pain and, and then really enjoy the benefits mm -hmm. of success? That's what it takes. It takes going through that downtime. 
It takes, I don't know how many businesses Lenny has had. Mm -hmm. It takes losing all of those businesses. It, take, mm -hmm. it takes learning from a lot of losses to be. But a lot of people tap out. Uh, yeah, a but lot that's of people the difference. Slide, yeah, I know. That's the 98%. You know. That's the 98% but we know this. versus the 2%. You understand? Like, but, but, so, but what is it, though? So, And that's what I'm saying is you that in the future, we're sitting it, here. We, we bitch about what the future looks like and we complain about this generation, right? And, uh -huh. and you know, we talk about participation trophies often and, and, and that and that losing That's thing. That's what's great about Trust boxing. me, Flacco, <laughs> I, I never thought that you would. Ever. <laughs> Trust me. After having spent a little bit of time with you, I know. You do not believe no, in, in participation trophies. But I'm just saying. Like, I think like, that weakens us as a society. Well, I'm, that's uh, the reason why heavy, we have man CF up. I am a, a heavy advocate against participation trophies I, I had my first show uh august 2nd and i gave away beautiful sterling silver rings as the prize and the name of my show it was april 2nd so it was fools fall down like mm -hmm. it was a fool's day fools fall down and boxing mm -hmm. fools fall down and they got a big number two medal <laughs> like mm -hmm. they, they, they lost like you fucking lost <laughs> First place loser. Yeah. But you don't lose, you'll never win. If you don't know what it's like to lose at something or have a kid beat you or get, you know, get outrun or get fired, you will never win. You can't. You can never achieve the top without getting Experience knocked down. The bottom and hate yeah. You got to hate the bottom. And that's, I guess, and, and that to me, I think, is, is, how do we get people to embrace? Anybody notice you like that? <laughs> she grabbed that mic. But do you understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna. I swear to God, Flacco. I swear to God, I'm gonna take my shoe off and throw it at you. But yeah, I, I, that to me toes. is and the conversation. Of, will you focus? Uh, oh my God! I, I can talk you, to him like this. I promise you, her toes are done. I promise you, you will never they drink. They will. 1942. When you come on this podcast <laughs> ever again, I can promise you that. Blasphemy. We're having the man. The fuck up. Oh, up conversation and right that's now. That's why we're talking about a cute chick's toes. No. No? Lenny? Yeah. You know. Toe size? That's cute. The toes, have you know, you kind of toes? describe no. <gasps> Maybe. I'm sitting here. I'm sure I have. Toes. But they describe they describe other parts of the body. And this is what happens. We just we get derailed by the man shit. By the beautiful chick. We just get derailed by the man shit. What are you gonna do? All I told the you time. to wear one piece to the show. Okay, listen. Can we focus back here, please? So should have been here last week. What did she have on last week? What are you talking I don't know. I about? think it was a little skimpier than that. No, it was literally another. This she is never, my attire. Ask her. Ask her what my favorite skimpy outfit. The favorite skimpy thing she wears. We don't wears. know. Oh my god. You know what it is. But first of all, I don't wear skimpy. You're my trainer. The tapered I don't wear, leggings. That's leggings. It's athleisure the wear. But then tapered. Athleisure <laughs> wear. Athleisure <laughs> wear. Oh my god. It was what people wear to wear. the gym. <laughs> Flacco, I understand that you normally cha train sweaty, smelly little boy boxers. I get it. So annoyed every time she would wear like the tapered ones. I'd be like, "Oh, those are so cute." Yeah. Anyway, listen. I, I, want, I want to be. Angry. But if you yeah, ask me, that was a little skimpier than <laughs> what that you're wearing was now. Last Wait, week, and I had oh. a hoodie on over it. <laughs> Oh one my sec, God. I got a better one. That yes. was Jesus. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> Gentlemen, can you please focus? And this Just, is why the world... Nestor's got all the pictures. ...gets derailed. Because literally all of it takes is a little shoulder and the conversation goes and right yeah, out the window. you don't change wearing it. What? Are you talking? I'm, I'm trying to focus the conversation. But anyway, as incredible as you have been, it is now going downhill very quickly. Yeah, we better wrap up. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot. But yes... I do love the fact that you mentor, you know, these kids, that you give back to the community. I think that your situations have come full circle and you have that numerous times in your life. You know, it always makes me laugh because we bring people in to do the Man TF Up podcast and every guest we've had has kind of glossed over these really poignant moments in their life. And I think that that's kind of like a testament to the fact that when you're the type of person that knows how to man the fuck up, you don't sit there and wallow in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you know, you've listed multiple tragedies in your life, multiple situations that could have completely derailed you. And here you are, a business owner, a mentor, a father of three incredible children, you know. So when you list those things, for anybody else, losing your mother could have derailed you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
you know, having the situation with your, your marriage could have derailed you. Having a kid could have derailed you. Having situations from your past come up and hinder you from being able to take your nursing career further. You know, when you immediately couldn't become a firefighter, right? All those years ago because of things you had done in your past. No, you just, you kept plotting forward. But you don't even, it doesn't even register you. Like, you could have been like, that's manning the fuck up. That's manning the fuck up. I man the fuck up. Like, but I've noticed that everybody that sits in that chair, when we have these conversations, nobody even really thinks of it no, because, like that. Because when something like that happens, we go, all right, tomorrow's a new day. And we get up and we do what we have to do. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I just told somebody this not too long ago. I'm like, you know, they're like, oh, and I went through some shit, going through some shit, whatever. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to do any of this stuff necessarily. I don't want to be... You know, over here swinging a hammer, over here moving a bag, over here. You know, it's not it's not my first choice, but I have to do it. Mm-hmm. And I get up every day and do what I have to do. Like, I I, I almost think of it so like one day I can do what I want to do. Yeah, and I've been thinking of it lately, like, I'm like a machine. They're like, why? you know, somebody asked me, why are you? And I'm like, you know, take a break, do this. I'm like, I can't. I have to. You know, it has to keep going. It has to get that done. That break hurts. Like, I, that, that break causes me yeah. physical pain. <laughs> I don't I don't like going on, like, when I go on vacation, if I'm not riding an ATV or jumping off a mountain, like, I'm I'm back at work. <laughs> even even I was in Argentina for, for three weeks with my wife, and I was sitting at the table. I couldn't physically be at the gym, so what did I do? I went back to the very beginning and back to reading the books and back to sketching out what I was going to do on paper. Mm-hmm. With each program and how I can make it better, and and that's what always, I think that's what drives anybody who sits in the seat. By the way, I had no idea that I was sitting in this seat, like that this was the, <laughs> the fuck yeah, up seat. Well, I mean that's the guest seat, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think I think in the end, you reinvent yourself, whatever it is, even if it, it's the same career, a new career, reinvent yourself and be successful that day. You'd be successful every day of your life, then in the end, your life was a success. Well, I also think, too, the other thing that I can take away as I run through guests is that none of them, yourself included, fear challenging themselves. Like, I don't know if it's an inherent, you know, quality where you're just competitive, but it's like there's always room for growth. And I don't mean that in the cliche way where, you know, we're always evolving because most of the dudes who sat in that chair and even the women are, you know, are alphas. Like it's not, you know, this kind of utopian expression Mm. of there's always room for evolution. It's like, no, like I always want to be a better version of myself. I can always do better. I can always be more. I can always raise the bar. I just always want to challenge myself. You know what I'm saying? Glass ceiling. I think think that's inherent probably of anybody who sits in this chair, anybody who's successful, is that there's a glass ceiling. There's no, there's no end all goal. Every goal breeds a new goal. No limits. Yeah, it's always it's it's small small wins towards a long term goal, and if you reach that long term goal, that long term goal only becomes a new uh, a old uh, short term goal. So, do you think that people watching this, Olenny, and I guess this is a question for you, if they don't have that in them, like, you know, we're in this space, this podcasting space, and there's a lot of people listening to a lot of different conversations, right? Mm-hmm. We have the Grant Cardones out there. There's the other dude, super successful. Um, another business guy, I can't remember his name. You follow him too, I follow him. You know, we have all of these people trying to teach. Gary. Gary, yeah, yeah, Gary Vee, right? Yeah. Oh, um, Gary, my, my homeboy was on one of his, like one of his, Gary's Instagram things, Gary Vee, right? That's mm-hmm. what yeah. talking about. My homeboy, who was one of like, my original like guys I looked up to from the hood was on one of his Instagram things. And it was just another well, example of people that hit the bottom and come back up. The same well, guy. And also where you start does not determine where you finish. No. Like, which is, I think, that's something that I love about Gary. But do you think that people that don't have this inside of them can catch it by listening? Like, Listen, I, 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 think I don't mean anybody, that in a negative way. I think you know? anybody can be successful. I think that anybody can do whatever they want. I'm, their only limits are really, I mean, there are none. I mean, you know how I feel about you know, people who 
say, oh, I wish I could work out. Well, why can't you work out? You know, I, <laughs> da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. you know, the whole routines, yeah, the whole why? mentality of the negative. I do. I go to spinning. People lean to the negative rather than the positive. They they're upset about tomorrow or my metabolism or my this or my that (laughs) bullshit you're a lazy piece of shit get up and work you know but yeah people can be successful but i don't think everybody is a boss okay i don't think everybody has that inherently in them to be a boss they might be able to be a boss at something Mm -hmm. like you know someone could open a crochet shop and be the boss there but they're not going to be a fortune 500 yeah you know i mean because it takes it takes a certain amount of stuff and everybody has to you know get a level but we can't have we can't, we can't all, be, all be bosses, bosses. no we no. need to have if you don't have workers you don't have anything but it also goes back to you know flaco uh, again if i was just watching this as an outside viewer like hearing him tell his story it's so rare it's so rare especially here in south florida and especially with the people that you know i kind of circle circle or, or just am around to hear somebody say you know so long like the bills are paid. My family's taken care of. Like, I'm good with this. Like, A, I'm going to make it happen no matter what, right? Like, so we went from tuna fish in the can and a potato in the microwave, right? Like, grinding because there was an end goal. Like, I know where I need to get to. But now when I get there, if life throws me something, I'm still able to adjust and swivel. And it's about priorities, right? Like, not everybody needs to be Grant Cardone flying around on a private jet with a freaking, you know, Rolls Royce SUV waiting on the tarmac. That's not what everybody prioritizes in their life. And I wish we would stop making that the message because my question is like, when I see that is like, are you happy? Yeah, but you're asking that my, my problem is when we talk about kids, like when we're talking about right now, kids, they think everybody wants that life and everybody in life doesn't want. But I'm saying like, we got to teach those kids like, but is that guy happy? But that's why you're it's on this podcast, Baco, yeah. is what man. I'm saying to you. Like, you're yeah. here to tell this story about a guy who owns a, a community gym that mentors kids, yeah. that's got a beautiful family. But to your point and to your uncle's story, okay, this is this is the point of that story that your uncle, or that, you know, yeah. that you told mm-hmm. that about message. your uncle grabbing you, that, that message. message. Yeah. People nowadays are focused on what they can't have. Mm-hmm. And if you well, what they want, don't have. Yeah, what they don't have. And if you want to get that big house and live that life, you can't dwell on it every day. No. What you do is you get up and grind mm-hmm. in that direction. Mm-hmm. And that's what people don't get. They yeah. stay focused mm-hmm. on that big house. I mean, I'm sure you'd love to have a house on uh, Long Island, Who you know. It? Like, you know, you know, cleans it. That, yeah, but what you know what I'm my, saying? That was like, my wife's you, whatever you want to have, house. whatever yeah. you want to have, you're not getting up every day going, oh, I gotta have that. I gotta have. It. You're getting up every day and working. And when you get to that point, you'll have what you want. Well, you'll have what you want. But with and with you saying that, and now it makes perfect sense what Flacco is saying though. And if happiness is your priority, if you've been through enough shit in life where just being happy and everybody being good and having your kids in a safe, healthy environment under one roof being provided for, like you literally are the richest person yes. on the planet. Yes. In that moment, you have more riches than half of the billionaires Period. on the world who are constantly chasing something else. And I think that that's, that's the message that as we yeah. talk, it's nice to have people that have made have monumental success. That's incredible. The 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 point zero zero one percent. I don't know about you, Lenny, but I'll tell you this: I was sit I was sitting outside with my wife one day on the on the little swing in front of my house, my third wife. Uh, <laughs> and love you, Flocky. And uh, I said something about I'm like, man, fuck it, everything's going good. I'm happy. Like, I wonder what the fuck's gonna happen. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? And that was like the last. That was the the definitely I think the most recent lesson I learned. And happiness, because I'm so used to rolling with the punches. I'm so used to getting hit and getting back up. And like, she's like, "Why does something bad have to happen?" And I'm like, "It doesn't have to happen, but it's gonna happen. Like something's yeah. gonna happen. Some there's gonna be a curveball somewhere." But what's super cool was was her message is like, just that you can't just be happy. Like maybe there's no more curveballs coming. Just be happy. And that was like, that was a huge, that was like another mm-hmm. huge step because I was mm-hmm. already this happy dude no matter what I did. Mm-hmm. But now I was happy being happy. I didn't even, I'm, I'm working on not even having that second thought of my happiness. Like, oh no, like what's going to happen? Like, oh, 
I got this great job now. Like, oh, the gym's doing great. But like the pandemic. But that's came, manif- I mean, that's the power of of thought and, and manifestation. That's yeah. a whole other conversation. When you start worrying about the other shoe dropping yeah. so Gonna much drop. that that's what you You're that's what you start dragging to it in to your life. Yep. So yeah, it's like being it, speaking it mm-hmm. like like uh, uh, negative. Uh, yeah. Well, because the universe yeah. doesn't understand negation. It doesn't. The universe doesn't get you. Don't want that to happen. It's right. just focused on what you're focused words, on. Words and you're meaning. focused on words have meaning. I teach losing. Them. Like, oh yeah. Words have meaning. And but no. I liked uh, I liked Wayne Dyer's uh, book on on divine intention, where he said like, how can you have a destiny? And yet have free will. And like I came up with my own like version of it. I think God gives us many paths. Mm-hmm. And when you choose your path and you work towards that path, as long as you're working towards it, God's going to give you favor because he wants to see you successful. God wants to see all of us be successful at what we want. So just focus on being happy and successful and make it happen. I just love that we've had a former NFL player last week sitting in here talking about Thinking Big, right? His mm-hmm. book. You're talking about Wayne Dwyer. You're a boxer the criminal record and also many other things. I just like to go back to the negative just to think here you are talking about manifestation, the power of your words, you know, divine intention. And again, when we when to the men that are watching this program, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with evolving, with growing your mind, with getting help, talking to somebody, therapy. Y'all need it, I think, sometimes more than women just because women as a stereotype are talkers, right? Like, oh, we have our girlfriends and this is what we do. We just kind of unload our problems on one another. And men are taught to really keep it all in, to to wear the, to you know, to bear the, the brunt of the weight on the, their own shoulders without ever releasing that. And that's toxic. Absolutely. As toxic masculinity. So, Flock was a crier, in case you didn't know. I cry. <laughs> Every time he sees your ass. <laughs> I was going to get into the Tyson fight, but at that point, we're wrapping this up. Yeah, we need to wrap this up. That was the way to do it, I guess. Well, <laughs> Lenny being the consummate child. What do you mean? Child in the man cave. You we said he cries. About, I said just why. Talked about being happy. Listen, <laughs> listen. Talked about being happy. Like, you subscribe, it share, follow. Uh, you can check out Flacco at Flacco's Community Gym if you happen to be in South Florida. Uh, Flacco, give out all your social media stuff. Hollywood forty four nineteen Hollywood Boulevard, right there before Presidential Circle. We got at the underscore FCG. We got Flacco five one two five, or we have Flacco's Championship Games. If you a fighter. And you want to put it out on the big show, holla at your boy, uh, August 27th. We're making it happen again, man. And there it is. It's officially a wrap for this week's episode of the Man TF Up podcast. Thank you for hanging out with us in the Man Cave. Uh, we are absolutely everywhere. At Man TF Up TV uh, is our handle on Instagram and TikTok. And from there, you can find us through our link tree everywhere else. Everywhere else, yes. Would I'm any, not going to say it again. Any parting words? Okay. Thank you for nope. tuning in. We'll see you next week. Beautiful Miss Kimmy B. (laughs) Peace.